If I told you just a couple years ago that there would be a player who in one postseason would eliminate LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and Jimmy Butler averaged a 30-point triple-double while taking a franchise to their first NBA Finals and breaking multiple records in the process, would you even believe me? That sounds like one of the greatest runs in NBA history. And that's because it is. Today's video is sponsored by DraftKings. UFC fans, we've got a big fight coming up this weekend, and you know our friends over at DraftKings had to hook us up with another deal you cannot refuse. Right now on DraftKings, new customers who sign up using promo code Jimmy Highroller and bet just $5 on any of this weekend's fights will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, bet just $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. And you can take those $200 in bonus bets and stay in on the action with DraftKings Same Fight Parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Same Fight Parlays? You're not going to find that anywhere else. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, you can still get in on the action with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have a chance to win cash prizes. Just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code Jimmy Highroller and bet just five dollars on any wager and get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly that's promo code jimmy high roller only at DraftKings sportsbook in terms of offensive brilliance, LeBron James set the gold standard for what is possible in the postseason, piling up an offensive box plus minus of 12.8 back in 2009. This record has yet to be broken, and it may never be, because the next closest playoff run in terms of offense was Michael Jordan in 1991, Michael Jordan again in 1990, and then LeBron James again, and then Michael Jordan again, and then our friend Nikola Jokic, and then more Michael and LeBron. You won't even find another name on this chart until we get down to the 11th best offensive postseason in NBA history with Stephen Curry in 2017. But Michael LeBron and Steph are possibly the three greatest offensive players of all time. So what does that make Nikola Jokic? Well, among the career playoff leaders in offensive box plus minus, you'll find the greatest offensive weapons the game has ever seen. Magic Johnson, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron James, Nikola Jokic, and Michael Jordan. So far this postseason, Jokic has managed to accomplish something that was previously thought to be impossible. Lead the playoffs in points, rebounds, and assists. A feat that has never been done before. But somehow this accumulation of stats is not that surprising. The man is getting triple doubles like they grow on trees. I've seen the name Nikola Jokic next to the words triple double so much this season, I almost forgot they were really hard to achieve. In fact, Nikola Jokic now has 10 triple doubles this postseason alone, which is more playoff triple doubles than all but five NBA players have ever achieved in their entire career. Now, a big burling center like Nikola Jokic is supposed to be really good around the rim. Among players with at least 1,000 career playoff shot attempts, Jokic ranks second all-time in effective field goal percentage. As impressive as this is, I kind of expected it. But you know what I didn't expect? Among players with at least 1,000 career playoff shot attempts, Jokic also ranks second in three-point percentage. Now, before you go and pick your jaw up off the floor, I must also tell you that among high-volume playoff shooters, there are only two players in NBA history who have career splits of 50-40-80, Kawhi Leonard and Nikola Jokic. Jokic is really good at everything, so how do you stop him? Well, what would most players do in this situation? Jokic is sandwiched between a double team, but he's got a few options. Does he A, lob it up for Jeff Green, who's got a man sealed off? B, swing it to Jamal Murray at the top of the key, or C, float it above Bam and attempt to knock down an eight-footer. He does none of those things, and instead slips a pass to a cutting Christian Brown for an easy dunk. One of the best ways to describe Jokic's game is that he makes it difficult for his teammates to even make a bad play. If you're open, he'll find you. Like this play right here. <laughs> 
Jokic gets the mismatch on Butler in the high post. Kyle Lowry sees this, and so he signals Highsmith to double him. Now, right away, you can see Highsmith doesn't want to commit to the double. He knows it's a bad idea, because even with his man on the other side of the court, he knows Jokic can just easily do this. But in some cases, the Heat choose not to double. And since there's no one in the NBA who can guard Jokic one-on-one, -on -one, this turns into about the easiest two points you'll see in the finals. In terms of offensive value, one thing we have trouble measuring is a player's gravity. When a player becomes a perpetual threat on offense, they leave the defense with no choice but to pick their own poison. All the great players have this effect to some extent, but the gravity Nikola Jokic imposes on the opposing defense is like some sort of black hole, pulling everything within his vicinity in against their will. On this play, Murray uses the pick and finds a rolling Jokic at the center of the defense. Once Jokic gets the ball here, Miami's already failed on this defensive possession. Look around the court. Highsmith is the only defender within eight feet of his man. Miami is so consumed with stopping Jokic at the point of attack that they leave him with three open options from which he can choose from. Here's another play from just a few possessions later. It's a different action, but Jokic gets the ball at the center of the defense again. And this time, instead of completely collapsing, the Heat play the passing lane, and Jokic gets a wide open floater. What exactly are they supposed to do in this situation? And this gravity that Jokic imposes on the defense has a reverse effect on his team. One of the many negative side effects to ISO heavy ball is that even if the player getting the majority of the shots is the best option, it completely disincentivizes his teammates from moving without the ball. And now since they're less willing to run around and make cuts for what feels like no reason, these teammates end up standing around even more, leading to them being open even less, leading to an ISO heavy player passing even less, and it just snowballs until your offense is completely stagnant. But when Jokic has the ball, his teammates are engaged, knowing that if they get open, he will find them. Like this play right here, Jokic sets a screen for Murray and seals Butler off. Jamal Murray looks to feed Jokic the ball, but look in the corner. Michael Porter Jr. is already cutting to the basket, and Jokic doesn't even have the ball yet. Porter instinctively knows that if he gets open, Jokic is going to find him. Now these are basic motions any team will go through depending on the set, but how many players can still execute the pass that leads to the layup? But Jokic's gravity only works if he is a threat to score the ball. Unfortunately for the Heat, he's really good at that too. Have you ever seen a player get a reluctant 41 points? It's not fancy, it's not loud, half the time it doesn't even look good, and yet no one has found a way to stop it. Everyone knows just how incredible Jokic is at creating offense with his passing, but I don't think the magnitude of this skill set is emphasized enough. Shaquille O'Neal holds the title as the most dominant player of all time. He couldn't hit a free throw, he wasn't the type to survey the floor for open teammates, but none of that mattered because there wasn't a soul on earth that could guard him. But what if Shaq could knock down his free throws? What if he was one of the greatest playmakers of all time? What if he could hit threes? He'd probably have been the greatest player to ever touch a basketball, right? Well, in the 2000 playoffs, Shaq had the greatest postseason run of his career, averaging nearly 31 points, 15 rebounds, and three assists on 57% shooting. This was his masterpiece. Now take a look at Jokic's numbers from this postseason. Shaq was one of a kind because he was so unstoppable that he didn't need any variance in his game. But right now, Nikola Jokic is dominating the game like a prime Shaquille O'Neal while shooting 47% from three, while hitting 80% of his free throws, while orchestrating the offense nearly every single possession. Jokic is becoming one of the most lethal offensive weapons the game has ever seen. And he's doing it in a way that only he could. Among the greatest offensive players of all time, here's a chart of their best playoff runs in terms of points generated. That's points a player created through both scoring and assists. 30 is the threshold here, but most all-time greats surpass that total. KG, Barkley, and Carmelo all had playoff runs where they generated about 35 points a game. Dwayne Wade is the first player on this list to crack 40 points generated per game in a playoff run. Giannis, Kareem, and Steph all had runs averaging about 42 points generated per game. Keep climbing and you'll find the nine players who surpassed the coveted 45 mark, and only six of them did it in the modern NBA. Allen Iverson's best playoff run that came in 2001, Luka in 2022, Jordan in 1990, Magic in 1986, LeBron in 2018, and Nikola Jokic this season.
creating more offense than any player in any season ever.